I thought I'd do a new blog, this time about an old camera which I purchased through an auction site um, very cheaply and it runs on a parallel port and it's called the Starlight Express MX 5C camera and there it is there and I've basically attached what is a Zenit type camera uh, lens to the front of it and I've made my own extension tube which should be 25 millimeters because otherwise it, it focuses too short for the CCD. On the front of this particular model um, looking down through the lens there at the very back of that obviously magnified is the CCD lens inside there. Now what you're supposed to do and I've just started using this is to use this program which is called Pixcom 5 which you can download for free and it's supposed to focus on indoor objects first so as far as I've got with this program I've actually set this up using Windows XP on my PC I'm running this, pro this through a parallel port accelerator which came from Starlight Express and it's there and basically the, I'm needing three power points so this is my first sort of trial run of using this and I've taken a picture of basically what is up there which is the uh, light muscovado sugar with it, the firm's name begins with a B, Billington's and then at the back I'm running the Starlight Express through my parallel port on my computer now this basically said on the instructions when I saw it that it wouldn't work with um, an XP computer but I found it does work and I'll show you the settings on the screen that I've had on my XP in case you can come across one of these old cameras MX5C so my Pixcom my shortcut is there let's just zoom in on it shortcuts there okay and if you go to file set program defaults I set mine on LPT3 which is uh, port 38C which you can do in your BIOS um, I've got my mask size as being 7 pixels my camera offset I've clicked um, CCD type I've set as normal uh, background colour is set as grey uh, camera control uh, normal and I'm, I've actually got a Mark 1 fast interface which came with the camera and the camera came with a photography type case, case padded case and some various other connectors which I won't be using and so basically all I want to do is to get it going on using a normal camera lens so I'm calibrating so my first image which I've taken with this is basically of the Billington and we'll try I'll show you how we do it um, an image live right so I'm in the program which is pixcom5 spelt p-i-x-c-o-l-m-5 I click file I click uh, mark MX camera I hear a beep on the MX control interface on the, there's your menu on your control interface I'm going to try a tenth of a second uh, I'm indoors and I'm just going to take a photo. I'm not worried about exposure at the moment. I'm just going to take a photo and see what happens. Okay, and, and then it says exposure underway. That's doing my tenth of a second exposure. And there's a delay because don't forget this is going through the parallel port of your PC. It's not like you know accelerated digital photography of nowadays. It's, there we go. And there's my image. And it's a bit blurred, so it probably needs a bit of focusing. But that's the picture which might. Um, Starlight Express night cameras taken of this Billington's sh uh, light Muscovado sugar container. Okay, I've drastically reduced the lighting on the object now. I've taken a one second exposure using the CCD camera of the same Billington's container which is up there. My camera is now quite grainy as you can see and I'm recording in night mode. Uh, but it is 15 frames a second but I'm in night mode on my camera and it's grainy however with this CCD
camera which is for astrophotography I'm finding it sharp and focused so this camera really is a night camera suitable for astronomy my my problem is using this camera here um, I've got to get this barrel which is I may, I've cut it out of cardboard using a coping saw I've got to get this exactly the right length so that I can calibrate this front part of the camera lens um, to focus sharply onto the CCD to take night photography pictures so at the moment I'm I'm doing the, the beginner stuff which is for absolute beginners like me just getting calibrating it so I'm gonna to have to look at this lens bar and, and see uh, if I was using the SLR camera what distance it's set at and see if I can get some sort of calibration on it if this is now focused as close as I can get it to the CCD then obviously I can't focus the lens, is, the lens distance between this and the CCD is going to have to get shorter um, to, pick, to focus on, on uh, objects further away from the lens and if I can't do that I'm going to have to cut this tube which people say it was a 25mm I've already cut this down to about 20 millimeters maybe it needs to be like 16 millimeters but there will be a point at which I'll be able to focus uh, and get long distance um, focus for my astrophotography let's see right I'm going to now turn all the lights off and try a, um, a longer exposure and see what we get The Starlight Express MX5C camera comes with a challenge. The CCD chip will not be in focus if you use an ordinary camera, uh, SLR camera, uh, screw on front lens, which I'm using at the moment. However, the way around it is to focus on an internal object, and I used basically cardboard tubing such as this which is thick, very thick, the sort of thing you might get aluminium rolls on and a coping saw. Starlight Express MX5C camera came with a parallel port interface. The camera itself came, comes with a special uh, Mark 1 which was, this is a Mark 1 interface and I had to f work out which way to put the camera interface which is parallel port into this accelerator. It can be used without the accelerator but then slows down the transfer to the parallel port at the back of your computer. Now my person I bought this from, it said it would not work on Windows XP but I got it to work on Windows XP. My very first image of a star is there on the screen I've not processed it, it at all and I was looking at the two stars in Gemini, Castor and Pollux and I've actually caught one of them and basically I've basically been very pleased with this because I've had to calibrate the image to take pictures of stars and that's my very first picture I've taken. The Starlight Express camera range um, works on its own, the own set of software which you can download. I downloaded Pixcom 5 um, and basically the problem is that the actual camera itself you'll need to get tube some people say you can use a 25 millimeter adapter tube I tried using cardboard tube very thick cardboard tubing here and I just used an ordinary fret saw an ordinary coping fret saw to saw a length of tubing first of all I tried 25 millimeters but then because lenses this is a typical old camera lens that I use the front lens of an old very old camera obviously an SLR camera You'll find, because they're threaded I'm going to have to take a bit more off the cardboard tube so I tried using about 21 millimeters of cardboard tubing making sure that you choose a very dark area of the sky and turning lights off this is a raw image taken from uh, deep sky just 20 seconds and the idea is you must use the increments instead of typing in the values you've got to use the arrows to uh, pick out what exposure time you want and I picked 20 seconds when I typed in the value of 20 seconds it just the camera seemed to only work for a fraction of a second so I'm picking out some stars the focus I know is good on this so at the moment I'm, I'm looking at something I'll probably have to take a dark frame to get this image better but I'll try a longer exposure and see what happens but I'm, I'm picking up stars already
This is the menu that you can work with. You choose your exposure. I'm working the seconds mode. But instead of typing the value in, you see where these little arrows are. You need to put your exposure values using the little arrows here. So I'm going to increment this up to 40 seconds. I'm not worried about the focus mode because I've already um, focused internally. And then what I did is I adjusted um, using calibration where 2.2 meters were. I looked on the actual camera barrel lens to see how far you'd have to move it, you know, either clockwise or anticlockwise, to make it go to infinity. And I just moved it by that amount. It's not set at infin infinity, but it's been calibrated so that it would focus infinity and it seemed to work. So I'm just going to then press this take photo button after I've put in an exposure value of around 35 seconds and we'll see what happens. Using 25 seconds of exposure value, um, I found I'm picking up, I mean I'm living in a, in a fairly light polluted area, but you can certainly see some see stars in this image here. This, is, this picture is taken towards um, the plough actually and I'm getting the stars how I want them. I found if I increase exposure value on this camera to above about 25 seconds on maximum aperture because this is an f1.8 lens, it's a very fast lens I'm using, it starts to overexpose so that gives me a clue as to how best to use it but but for now I'm absolutely very pleased I'm actually picking up you know stellar pictures and I should be able to use a star chart to identify the stars and hopefully then see if I can move on to uh, one of when visibility is better to better stellar imaging. But the idea for me was to take some astrophotography pictures and to even see something using this basic camera which works on a parallel port through and Windows XP was a great revelation to me. So if you do see one of these out and about, um, then you can set it up uh, similar to mine, hopefully. But uh, you have to try and experiment on which ports to use. I've disabled the printer on this old XP computer, but here I am doing some astrophotography for the first time using Starlight Express camera. Increasing exposure to 25 seconds, um, you can see I've picked up far more detail from deep sky and obviously brighter stars are going to overexpose but it's also picking up a lot of other fainter stars it's very sort of misty out there it's not a fantastic night for astrophotography but the Starlight Express camera is picking up a lot more faint detail again these pictures are taken towards the plough which is more visible than most uh, uh, objects at, at, at the moment and again I haven't tried any dark friends I'm just taking raw images at the moment once you've got your stellar image, then basically you can then use different tools. Here I've used a few tools on this raw image. I haven't, I haven't even, um, I've done what's known as unsharp masking on it. There's a choice of menus there, so I chose that. Um, I looked at contrast and I gave it a normal stretch. And also with color, I set, I synthesized a color image. Um, I undid the effects of that and then basically I'm left with this because this is a, a colour shot camera and it, and it should give you um, basic ideas to the, the gen general colours of the stars and of course the colours of the stars are related to the um, the elements which are involved in the nuclear reactions of stars uh, and of course whether or not that we're moving towards or away from um, that can alter the light, red shift, so called red shift or blue shift but for for my first go at using this camera, my first attempt at focusing it, I'm pretty pleased with this image on a, on what is a very misty night using a, a CCD camera. Having taken another image now, which is not uh, again, I haven't taken a, a a dark frame. The problem you've got is I'm using, of course, a tripod, and I'm not putting this on tracking. So the next time I use this camera, having calibrated it, I should be putting run, riding piggyback on my old uh, telescope which is a conus which has got a motor on it and then hopefully if I set it up correctly so that it's moving um, equatorial axis then you're going to offset the movement of uh, the earth as we're spinning around and the reason why you're getting blurring on these bright images is because the CCD uh, chip itself is equivalent to a very very short focal length um, lens if you like if you were looking through say a, a three or a four millimeter lens so under it's like looking under very high power so the stars are going to appear to move very quickly so the exposure time you've got um, without 
tracking is limited. I find it seems to be limited to about 25, 26 seconds, but already you're picking up, to me, very good detail. Using a planisphere set for the correct latitude, you can then try and identify the main constellations which are visible. And I pointed the um, MX-5 camera at um, um, Ursa Major and then s headed towards more towards the zenith and caught these fainter stars here with an exposure of about 25 seconds and again I haven't processed it's just a raw image and the, the sky's gone now gone very cloudy so I'm quite pleased just with my first outing with the night camera looking forward to uh, having a go at tracking images and seeing if I can take some deep sky stuff there's a lot of basic image processing you can do and people did spend a long time on this but I'm, I'm not really sort of going to spend ages myself because I really just want to get to grips with how to use this here I've applied um, basic filters and you can, you can look at uh, the choice here you can re reduce um, you can have a noise reduction you can have um, high pass high power filters and things like this so I've just seen what I can do with the image here to sharpen it up a bit and I mean there's quite a bit of noise on it but you're able to see a bit more detail on the image before you process it. For my astrophotography I've been using a Pentagon Auto 1.8 uh, so it's a very fast lens on the front and it's multi-coated and I've actually set this um, the aperture on this as wide as possible I would suggest that you could actually stop this down for um, astrophotography on a tripod if you want to take slightly longer exposures than say 25 seconds but again on, on this basic astro tripod I'm using here for my first go at using this uh, uh, vintage camera um, they're sort of circa 1998 and we're now 2015 so it's 17 you know 18 years old and because they were made even older than that I'm running it through Windows XP and so I'm using it as, at its most basic mode but for then I'm, I'm able to, you're able to get sort of almost sort of you know 10% of a constellation of stars which is, is pretty impressive really you can cer cer you know certainly not, wouldn't be using it for planets but you could you, I'm not really particularly interested in Luna but I would try Luna now that I've got it calibrated